Pawn Stars is a reality show filmed at Rick Harrison's Gold and Silver Pawn Shop in Las Vegas. The show began something that its creators were not expecting in the first place. They started an entirely new reality television genre. Pawn Stars paved the way for shows like Storage Wars and American Pickers to become hit shows because of the excitement viewers get from uncovering a hidden treasure that has been hidden from the world for many years. Pawn Stars give their fans exactly what they want each episode by featuring items that may or may not be worth a ton. The show is full of other hilarious moments between the Harrison boys, but what really makes the show great is when someone walks in with an item that turns out to be worth $100,000, or maybe even more. And with a show as popular as this one, there are lots of weird people, wild deals, and crazy items. Even after 10 years on air, the show still manages to bring in some very interesting items from sellers who normally walk away happy. Occasionally, a seller will leave and regret the decision they just made, but that is few and far between. Let's take a look at 9 times the sellers managed to rip off the pawn shop and loved the results of their appearance on the show. In season 4, an older man came to the shop wanting to sell his vintage 1932 Lincoln Roadster, and Rick immediately started drooling at the chance at owning such a rare vintage vehicle. This seller, who calls himself Uncle Phil, got the car from a museum a few years ago and was looking to get $100,000 for it, nothing less. With its 150 horsepower V12 engine, it was more powerful than most cars of its era, and the fact that it was still in great condition contributes to its high price. It turned out this purchase just would have a pretty unique history in the Pawn Stars register, not only because of the price or profit gained, but because of the way it was bought. After taking a look at the car, Rick figured he would have to repair some of the damage to it and offered him $95,000. But the owner quickly turned him down and would have left had it not been mentioned that he wanted gold as an investment. Luckily, the Harrisons keep plenty of it in their shop for trade purposes. So this spotlessly maintained car cost Rick $95,000, sending Uncle Phil home pretty sad satisfied because that gold is probably worth more than the cash. Rick and his son Corey Big Hoss Harrison found a classic icon designed by Henry Ford himself. With 500 horsepower, a unique combo of folding convertible top and roll up windows, so they headed across town to check it out. The only problem with this 1932 Model B Ford Roadster was that the owner was asking $105,000 for it. Rick's expert, who declared that he loved it and proceeded to lay out all the reasons the car was amazing, then put the value between $70,000 and $75,000. The pawning experts went back and forth with him over the total until they whittled their way only down to $68,250. However, afterwards, other experts said the car, which was a hot rod mod of the original, would probably only be worth about $50,000 in its current condition, which meant they'd need to spend money on getting it worked on and even then wouldn't be guaranteed a profit. The Harrisons got that special thrill when a mummy's mask came through the shop. It's not a mummy in the shop. Mummies are actual, like, whole bodies. This is a mask, I'm assuming? Yeah, it's a mask. So they decided to invite an antiquities expert, Dr. Phineas Castle, to examine the mask that came from an ancient Egyptian burial site and provide the viewers with interesting information about ancient artifacts. Dr. Castle determined that the mask was, in fact, genuine, and he valued it at $22,500. However, he he stated that because it's such a rare item, it could go for a higher price, not stating precisely for how much. Corey decided he really wanted this piece and eventually had no choice but only to pay the seller his asking price of $30,000 to own it. Maurice Sendak's picture book called Where the Wild Things Are has long been a favorite with young children who love the story's imagination and spirit. The book is published in 1963 and tells the story of Max, a boy who becomes king of a jungle land filled with wild beasts. It sold millions of copies and was eventually adapted into a film in 2009. The illustrations are a huge part of the book's success, so when a dealer approached Rick with the original artwork from the book, he got interested right away and went on a mission to check 
it out. The dealer Nick offered the collection for $375,000 due to the immaculate condition of the drawings. However, when Rick reached out to get an appraisal from an expert, he got the answer that the first two drawings were worth about $80,000 each, while the whole collection was estimated at $310,000. Rick started his negotiation by lowering the offer to $200,000, but the owner instantly rejected it. In the end, the deal was done at $250,000, still making this purchase one of the highest in the history of the show. Sports memorabilia is an extremely popular component on the market, so trophies, bats, autographs, rings, and uniforms are an immense part of the pawn shop as well. Unfortunately for Corey, he paid a whopping $31,000 for what he believed to be a Willie Mays game-worn uniform from 1961, but he was wrong. In a 2012 episode called Free Willie, a man named John came to the shop carrying the uniform that had too many red flags from the very start. The most significant proof for this claim was the fact that even Chumley had observed the apparent peculiarity. The uniform was pristine and it didn't look game worn at all. Knowing that Willie Mays was a baseball player who loved sliding around in the dirt and the grass a lot, its taintless look was more than suspicious. Although the seller had no authentication paperwork whatsoever, which is never a good sign. Nevertheless, Corey decided to go for it, losing $31,000, though he did manage to bring back some of the money two years later by selling it for $19,200 at an auction. In a fifth season episode called Corey's Big Play, Rick made quite the unusual mistake of buying something he was unsure of before he had it authenticated. Even though Rick is famous for his love of calling in a buddy expert for every single thing, occasionally he decides not to do so, which usually turns out to be a mistake. That was exactly what happened when a seller brought in a supposed 19th century Wells Fargo strong box, and Rick decided to trust his own feeling. Unfortunately for Rick, the box for which he had given $450 was hardly authentic. The seller also brought the box in stuffed with two ball and chain sets he thought were artifacts from the Yuma and Folsom prisons, but Rick recognized them as fakes right away. But that wasn't enough to make him check the authenticity of the strong box. When his expert Mark, aka Beard of Knowledge, saw the box, he notified Rick that it was one of the most widely faked items and that the strong box Rick had bought was a complete fantasy piece. Chumley is arguably the favorite cast member among fans, but he doesn't exactly have a good reputation when it comes to skills related to the pawn shop. One example of this happened in the episode called Face the Music from season 4, when Chumley was tricked into a bad deal that not only had him go over his reasonable purchase limit of $1,000, but also proved that he doesn't have that good an eye when it comes to spotting fakes. <laughs> Thank you. A man came to the shop offering Chumley a vintage Gibson mandolin, and despite many red flags regarding its appearance and construction, Chum decided to buy it for $1,500. Knowing how much his boss Rick loved guitars, Chumley saw a perfect opportunity to impress him. Unfortunately for him, he only bought a very poorly done fake. The mandolin turned out to be one of the thousands of fakes that could be found across the US. In the end, the mandolin left Chumley short of $1,400 since a music shop owner later estimated its worth at just $100. While the Pawn Star crew love to see instruments with famous fingerprints walk through the door, it doesn't happen very often that the original owner walks into the shop and tries to sell his guitar. Although, when Vic Flick came to the pawn shop during season 8, no one knew who he was. They soon found out he was the man that had taught some of the greats, including Jimmy Page. Vic is a British session guitarist who worked with many other popular singers and musicians. However, he became world famous as the original player of the iconic James Bond theme. That that was impressive information for someone who loves guitars as much as Rick does, and that was why he immediately agreed on paying Vic $55,000 for a 1961 Fender Stratocaster, thinking it had such great history. The problem was that Rick, arguably, got a little bit swindled in the deal, as the item lacked its case and was no longer entirely original. What's even worse, it might not even be the same guitar Vic played the famous James Bond theme with. After remaining in the shop for too long, with a price tag of $90,000, Rick decided to sell it on an auction, unfortunately for a much lower price. 
In the season six episode, Say It Ain't So, a customer came into the shop with a book allegedly signed by the famous player known as Shoeless Joe Jackson. Since this great baseball player was so popular among collectors, Rick decided not to consult his trustworthy experts and to take a gamble. When a customer showed him the book, Rick decided he didn't need any kind of advice and bought the item for $13,000. Rick was over the moon during the examination, stating that it might be the rarest sports signature ever because Jackson was illiterate. Though Rick knew that Joe's signature was one of the most faked, that wasn't enough to make him change his mind, especially after the seller had provided a letter of authentication. However, two experts confirmed that he should have done the same as always and call them on time since the signature was a poorly done fake. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.